Hello everyone, welcome once again to Cable Across Apologetics. I am Patrick, and I am going to introduce the 11th book in our uh, ones that we've been reading along with you. Hopefully you've found uh, the books that we've chosen to be uh, interesting, educational, and of course, sanctifying. Um, we uh, hope that the show uh, has been something that uh, has opened you up to <clears throat> not only just pulling the book off your shelf and blowing off the dust, but also utilizing the contents uh, that uh, we've been reading along with you, maybe encouraging your walk with Christ and uh, getting out there and talking to other people about uh, about Jesus, because that's what we do around here. So uh, one of the areas that we uh, care about here, uh, that uh, we make no bones about it, that we're presuppositionalists, but uh, we talk about that the uh, knowing God uh, gives us the ability to do things like know uh, the ability to do science, to know the laws of logic, that they'll be consistent, that they'll be there, um, and uh, that they're a product uh, not of the universe, uh, which is in constant change all the time, uh, but uh, that uh, we can know that it comes from the mind of God, that the promises of, that God makes are uh, what allow us to do science. And also what we talk about is ethics, the ability to know right and wrong. And so uh, we thought it'd be interesting to kind of take one of these uh, strings off of uh, our knowledge of God and talk about uh, different uh, views that stem from them. So we're going to take the ethics one. So uh, we're only looking at uh, different types of Christian ethics. And so uh, we found a book, uh, we've, we've talked about the uh, uh, Zondervan Counterpoint series a number of times. <laughs> I, I think uh, I think I'm pr probably a unofficial sales rep at this time uh, for them. Uh, but uh, InterVarsity Press has their uh, version of it called Spectrum Multiview, and we found uh, a um, four views, uh, Christian ethics four views, uh, edited by Steve Wilkins, that uh, discuss uh, obviously four different Christian uh, ethic viewpoints, and so. Uh, they are uh, the the asking the questions of you know uh, every Christian has the Bible and we know kind of the things to do and not to do but is what makes a, a good ethic viewpoint uh, something that you are uh, something that you you kind of sanctified yourself and you are the ethical person and thereby when you do things uh, because you're an ethical person you do the ethical things? Or is there some infused uh, sense in the world that says that uh, there are right and wrongs? And not only can the uh, supernatural man know those things, the Christian, but also the natural man can know those things and be held accountable to them. Or uh, is there a, uh, a necessary product of, of divine revelation that must happen that either through uh, personal encounter with uh, uh, spirit or uh, through the reading of scripture, uh, that that alone gives us the ability to know right and wrong. Or uh, is the fact that uh, the church is in the world and so is the mode by which God has directed um, people to go out in the world and be ethical, uh, that uh, uh, focusing on those who are uh, more marginalized or less represented in the world and uh, doing good to them uh, and with them, is that what makes ethics um, ethical? And so uh, all four of these viewpoints have uh, in this volume a, a proponent and each one asks uh, or pr pr presents their case uh, to the best of, of their written ability, which is always interesting because uh, in our modern debate form, uh, we always kind of talk about, well, who won the debate? And it's not so much on um, substance, but on form. And so the written debate uh, gets us past that, and uh, for the most part, and uh, makes the issue the topic at hand rather than, uh, you know, how well someone argued or how much of a bully somebody is. Uh, so the, the words presented are the, the initial viewpoint and then uh, the other views uh, follow up and present their counter argument to that viewpoint. And so it allows you to kind of see a little bit of back and forth. Uh, unlike the counterpoint series, uh, it doesn't offer a final uh, rejoinder by, the, by the, the, the main proponent of that view, 
Uh, but uh, I, I think um, I think we'll still get a lot out of this. And so uh, we have uh, the virtue ethics uh, that is uh, that is argued for uh, by Brad Candleberger. And so that's the one that says by being an ethical person, by sanctifying yourself, you can be uh, that, that the, the things that you carry out are ethical. And so the more ethical you become, more virtuous you are in character, the more your actions are. So it's more focusing on the person, the man, than it is about the specific actions. And so uh, that tends to be a very prominent one um, in the world of ethics uh, from the Christian viewpoint. Uh, Claire Brown Peterson is arguing for the natural law that uh, the, the the viewpoint is um, <clears throat> that ethics are kind of infused in nature in some fashion that they're that they're knowable uh, in nature uh, more so in the heart of man than in you know the trees and the rocks and uh, discoverable uh, like we do science or or um, in the mind uh, that our ethics or, or that our uh, logic uh, but that are uh, witnessed in the heart. So why do we have uh, a predominantly viewpoint that uh, murder is inherently wrong? Well, uh, because it's natural for the natural man to, to um, come to that conclusion, so much so that even uh, being a sinner and fallen in the image of God, we still retain that image, and it's natural for all people to know that. John Hare argues for the divine command theory, and that talks about the revelation that's needed for us to have an ethical viewpoint, to have a standard by which we can point to and say, no, this is ethical. And so uh, um, Mr. Hare is gonna be arguing uh, for in favor of that. Then I think what's gonna be interesting is this, uh, this volume isn't so new that, uh, that um, you know, it's, it's a, you consider it the most modern uh, textbook on the issue, but the fact that Peter Godwin Hetzel uh, presents the prophetic ethics, and what that says is that it's kind of uh, the church's responsibility to go out and um, fight, fight for the oppressed, um, uh, pre present a social gospel message, and be able to um, defend those who are more marginalized and who are more on the fringe, and uh, focus on the the doing good aspect of that. And so, a lot of the terminology that you'll hear, especially in that viewpoint is going to be uh, what we kind of tend to hear uh, in today's modern world, as if you're listening to this in 2024, um, uh, it'll be um, very familiar. If you're listening in the future, hopefully we are, and, uh, uh, and, and we're still able to communicate uh, through electricity and not through uh, uh, you know, the new Pony Express. But um, that, that view will be interesting to kind of take on in light of the other ones, because again, uh, this, um, this was published in 2017, so almost kind of right at the start of the viewpoint for, I don't know if you want to call it wokeism or uh, that type of resurgence of the social gospel message, uh, but uh, um, this one is not so much into um, the, the modern era where uh, the society at large has gotten to it. It's still, that's, that's, that still type of uh, uh, ideas are still within the the confines of the ivory towers that have yet to be re-released onto modern audiences. And so those are the four viewpoints. And um, I think each one has uh, something good to say. Uh, they each have their um, areas that we can quibble with. And so uh, I think doing this book presents a, a, a great um, opportunity to kind of uh, get more past uh, the uh, very basic level of just saying, well, the Bible tells me this. No, uh, uh, we're not going to argue with you on, on, on that show, you know, uh, on the show is, is if, if you point to the Bible and say that this is uh, the viewpoint of the Bible, we're, we're definitely going to agree with you. But as far as what the issues are that are bringing up in how to be ethical, um, not so much apart from that, but in conjunction with, uh, with God's revelation. Um, that's what's going to be interesting. So especially I'm really in interested for me personally, because uh, th these are kind of brand new for me. And again, I tap Tony and this is what Tony talks about on a daily basis in, in his classes. So uh, again, once again, I can, I can be your foil if, if these are, are new terminologies, but I think um, 
the, the fact that I hear a lot more about virtue ethics, um, at least in the groups that I hang around with, is interesting. And uh, I think uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to hold off as much as possible from agreeing with one right on the basis of definitions. And so, of course, we deal with our definitions first by the editor, Steve Wilkins, who presents kind of the uh, very quick and dirty uh, definition and then kind of uh, the history of, of it. And you'll see kind of how each ethical viewpoint almost falls along uh, denominational lines sometimes uh, and denomination I'm talking about in the big tent category. Um, and you'll see, if you know church history, a lot of these things um, have, have come up in the past. And so this is really cool to uh, be able to have these four uh, not quite opposing viewpoints, but uh, definitely different viewpoints and have them respond to each other. So uh, hopefully um, uh, you'll pick up the book. All the links will be in the descriptions in in the video below. If you're watching us, uh, if you're listening to us, it's it's um, it'll be in the whatever podcast catcher. You can go to caveofthecross.com for all of them. Uh, I won't have a, a book in the middle of the page uh, like I do yet, but it'll be... Um, almost in the middle of the page where the new episodes uh, uh, pop up and you can click on that and, and find it there. Once we get a few episodes in, then you'll be able to find the book in the middle of the page. I've redesigned uh, the um, uh, access for those, uh, the other books that we've done, the other 10 books that we've done. And so now if you click on it, you'll just get kind of the thumbnail covers and that'll be easier uh, for you as you want to click through uh, to the next episode rather than the old way of kind of the blog posty. We had to go r right back to the beginning here. Uh, episode one is of, of that book is going to be in order and it's going to take you all the way through. If we've interviewed the person, uh, that person's going to be last in the, uh, in, in the order. Uh, assuming we finished the book, I think maybe with one of them, we hadn't finished the book quite yet uh, before we interviewed him, but, uh, but you can, uh, watch the interviews in order as well. Uh, there's a, uh, a a tab for that there. So um, that's the changes made there, and uh, hopefully uh, that'll be helpful to you. And hopefully you will join us as we read uh, editor Steve Wilkins' book in the IVP's Spectrum Multi View series, Christian Ethics: Four Views, where we'll discuss four different viewpoints on how Christian ethics should be uh, carried out. And so uh, we'd love to hear back from you in the comments section. Um, see where you might stand at the initial point. Uh, see if there's any interesting points along the way. Love to interact with you in the comments, uh, as, especially if you're uh, not a Christian, uh, and especially if you are a Christian as well, uh, because uh, those tend to be uh, fewer, uh, but that's okay. And, uh, and uh, next time, uh, we'll give you kind of this week to uh, grab the book. It's available, you know, on all the places, Amazon. Uh, Logos has one. Uh, that's where I've been reading it on. And um, I'll throw up a few more links. So, uh, as always, uh, we thank you for uh, joining us. And um, hopefully you've enjoyed uh, some of the uh, more recent interviews. You can go back and check out uh, uh, my conversations about um, uh, being a good father uh, with, uh, with schooling, uh, no matter what position you take, with uh, policy expert, education policy expert, Jeff Park. And then, uh, of course, uh, a friend of the show, um, Troy Frazier with uh, spooky and coincidental church history stories. So those have been uh, really fun to see a lot of interaction uh, with those as well. So uh, as always, we say thanks for joining us. See you next time.